Hey guys, I've got another distribution sort of first impressions review for you today and I know what you're thinking, not another Linux Mint uh, video because I've already done quite a few of those on this channel before and you would probably be right, I would not be making this video if there was not a specific reason. So I've been trying out Linux Mint 18.1, the XFCE edition, which is still in beta at the moment, but in my experience, Linux Mint uh, betas are, are, are about as stable as any other distribution. Like, I've never had a problem in a release candidate for Linux Mint, and that's largely because it is based on Ubuntu, which is an already stable operating system, so the parts that actually can go wrong in Mint are actually quite limited. But anyway, I am going to be talking a little bit about the XFCE version of Linux Mint 8.1 because I've got to say... I wasn't like massively bowled over by by the other 18.1 distributions as that's largely because they're iterations of what came before them and to be honest not being amazed at Linux Mint is something I've become quite a, quite used to because if you know it's it's not the kind of distribution you're amazed at it's the kind of distribution that you you rely on that you grow comfortable with rather than a distribution where you wait for for every new cutting edge feature to come out and that's obviously displayed in their long term support and their long term release cycle and also, <clears throat> XFCE, kind of in a way, at least for me, seems to suit almost both long-term support releases and rolling releases um, really quite specifically well, because XFCE is a very slow, developing, very methodical kind of desktop environment. It doesn't evolve very fast, it doesn't get the latest and greatest features or UI improvements, but it does provide a consistent desktop environment that, at least in my experience and a lot of other people's experience, it's stable. I know whenever I say anything is stable, uh, anywhere, there's always going to be someone who's 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 come up against problems with it. But um, XFCE, to me, is the most consistent and stable desktop environment that I've used. It's, I mean, th there is, of course, things like LXDE and i3, which are, again, so simple that there's not really that much that can, that can go wrong, and that obviously makes it attractive to a lot of people, myself included. So, anyway, rather than me waffle on about the benefits of the XFCE desktop environment, I've got to say, um, this is a really good... Uh, this is this is this is like the biggest incremental improvement in Linux Mint I've seen in a while. It's only again, it's only fringe um, things, but they have they have fixed one big issue that that was was uh, bothering me about most of the other Linux releases up until now. Now, I have used I am currently using the Linux Y theme or the Mint Y theme, right? So. One of the things I do actually quite like about Linux Mint distributions, as well as, um, or the thing I, is, is the number of themes that, that come with it. Now, I've installed a few extra here, but uh, in fact, no, actually, I don't even think I have. I think these are what have actually come with the distribution, which is a lot, which is good. And there are lots of different colors to choose from. Arc is a lovely theme. Um, and then the Mint X themes, they're a little, they look a little bit dated, but they're good. So I've got the Mint Y Dark theme, and one of the reasons I didn't... I mean, I like the Mint Y Dark theme. It's based on Arc, which is my favourite theme. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. But the problem was that you had windows like these. Whenever you had two dark windows overlapping, you often didn't have like a, a window border if you were running in like software mode or took off the compositor or removed the shadows. This is no longer the case. This is no longer the case. Um... As you can see here, there are two dark windows that are kind of over, overlapping with a distinctive border in between them. But it, I can even go to, I can even remove the compositing here. And then as you can see, there is a nice thick, not exactly an obvious border going down there, but um, but it distinguishes one window from the other, you know, really quite clearly. Uh, also, though, the XFCE, the compositing in it, is is so, it seems it seems to require so so few system resources, so much less in general that um, that I I have less of a problem putting it on with the compositing on something like XFCE or even uh, GNOME. No, with the compositing on KDE, sorry, and and GNOME, it, they they seem to be significantly more elaborate uh, compositors. They seem to you know whether or not they're different or whether or not they're uh, but they seem to require more system resources they seem to be more flashy they seem to require more time for you know animations to complete and stuff like that i love xfce snappiness and i like i think applying that to like a long term distribution like mint um you know you've got a slow developing desktop environment against a a slow developing um 
Linux desktop operating system and you combine the two and you've got a very consistent desktop uh, user experience which I got to say if you know if if I'm the kind of person that just wants you know my operating system just to just to work this this would be the route that I would go down so I've got the mint white theme dark it comes in obviously lighter colors like so which again it looks very nice but you can't beat that deep dark color like for me you know in, in a lot of cases it um it just looks better and you've also you know it it can cause problems if you've got like glare on the monitor and sometimes you know you you, you want a bit of light on the monitor side so light themes can help there but if, if you've got a window in an awkward place but i just love the look of dark themes i think they look great one issue with the mint y icon theme is of course the dark icons you can see here so it's not exactly like they've weeded out all the little quirks of of the mint y theme in the mint because that's the icon theme here but it's a, it's a massive improvement and the visual continuity and consistency of Linux Mint is, is, is at least in my opinion and I know there are going to be many of you out there that consider that to be like a minor issue like a very small issue and a non-existent issue an issue that wouldn't even cross your mind but to me these kind of things I don't know like I, I work with a lot of people that struggle with using computers and and even basic UI um because they tend to be like they, they, they you know they, they tend to be maybe older haven't haven't grown up and lived their life with computers and it's so much easier to learn stuff when you're younger it's just it, it is incredibly you know I, i'm approaching 30 now and it's like you're starting to see like you, you know you do notice that oh it's you know it's not as easy to learn stuff as it was when you were like you know 16 17 18 when you could just pick up i remember you could just pick up a computer language and just run with it and now it's 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 more difficult but anyway other mint apps i do like the software center i think i've said this before it, some some people say that it looks a little dated or it looks a little um utilitarian you know like it, it just gives you the categories it gives you very little else it gives you a few options here it did ask if i wanted to switch to a mirror closer to where i live because i'm i'm uh, connected to a vpn at the moment which was really cool so it, 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 it i think that it's particularly important that distributions check for local mirrors or fast mirrors at least because i have seen a number of distributions that fail to do that or require you to do it manually and 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 i, I forget and sudden you know I, i'm getting like a one megabit a second download when i could be getting five and, and all that kind of stuff so uh, the fact that this is done automatically on a newbie friendly distribution, again, I, I really quite like this. So I know that Budgie and Solus are getting a lot of uh, praise and credit for being a very newbie friendly distribution, and they deserve that credit. They have done a great job at simplifying UI. One of the things I found about Mint, and I've only ever used Mint in my experience as an intermediate sort of f person who's very vaguely familiar with, with computers, is that it's a, is it, there's like a degree of consistency with this and with windows and with it. like things just seem to be where they expect where you expect them to be the the software selection for example again a lot of you guys don't consider this important for a newbie friendly distribution when someone's just installed it out of the box and they need what is essentially working functionality when at a time when they might not necessarily know how to install programs to, you know obviously it looks a little easier here but if you're used to a windows way of doing things or a mac way of doing things it might not be intuitive to you and I like the fact that they've then decided to make intuitive software choices. They didn't decide to like build a special application for it or or, or to do, you know, it, it just seems like every step of the way they've just given it some thought, which I really quite like. Simple scan, for example, that's, you know, GIMP, uh, image editor, multimedia. They've read it, they've got something called X Play here. I've got it down here. It's It's like the most standard media player that you can expect. It's 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 you know it is you know it's the Windows Movie Player and I think it comes from Totem or something you know a, a, an existing player, but look at that you you've look you look at that you already know how to use it look at that you already know how to install a piece of software. Look at that menu you already know how to navigate it. That's the things I like about XFC. That's the things I like about how Linux Mint decide to engage it and use it. And I think that the two just pair each other really quite well. I think the Mate and 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 mint pair each other well as well i gotta say not I, you know at this stage with so many great desktop environments around i don't really know why cinnamon is still here <laughs> I, I i i don't like sort of talking down on projects but we've got Marto, we've got xfce we've got budgie I, I know that came after cinnamon but really like it's just we've got we've got a saturation of desktop environments right about now when we've got perfectly good working ones which for example one another reason i like um desktop environments like uh, uh, xfce is because they work on just about any other linux distribution and i think they work on on bsd distributions feel free to correct me down in the comment section below there but um 
because I know GNOME is a bit funny on BSD. I think you know the BSD distributions I've 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 known and, and people who use BSD that I talk to, they say that like KDE is is the home for for BSD. I don't know that for myself, but um, but it, but it, 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 you know XFCE is designed to to work on as many different computers as possible and on many different operating systems as possible. Whereas something like uh, Cinnamon or even Mate, um, they're more complicated and then they're, they're more specialized. Uh, and even though Mate is, is also a desktop environment designed to run on, on lots of different distros as well, um, which is why, you know, I consider Mate and XFCE to be very close in terms of both functionality and in terms of quality. Um, I, I do feel that uh, that Linux Mint, of course, as well, you know, it's not necessarily just that, you know, why is Cinnamon there, but it's like, they. I feel that they've got two parallel distributions the cinnamon version and the mate version and the difference between them is not enough to warrant that initial that's the one thing that's the thing i always get on mint for is because they they offer two different desktop environments when they don't need to because the difference between them isn't massive and it might confuse new users um there is an application update it's the the whiskey uh, the whisker menu i have uh, like so you can now navigate it using um the keyboard uh, you can now search wikipedia i've tried that out that looks like um I don't know. I'll just do flags of Wales. I just made um that's because I typed it wrong. What did I do? It's exclamation mark W. There we go. Flags of Wales. There we go, and then it opens up um Firefox with the Wikipedia. Flags of Wales. Oh, and there is no Wikipedia page for Flags of Wales. There is a list of Flags of Wales, which I do recommend you guys check out. Or you can, of course, check out um, my other channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash fun with flags, where I talk about flags. There you go. Shameless plug there. Uh, XED, there, uh, it, it, it gives you the red bar if you're editing as root. I thought things like gedit already did that, but there you go. Um, the... Uh, XED now has support for dark themes, which you you know I mean they're they're still being developed these these X apps they're still quite new. The thing I do like about XPlayer is that it does give you the option to blank other monitors on a multi monitor setup if you're playing a full screen video. I gotta say I've just I just usually switch off a monitor if that requires not and and usually the glare of one monitor doesn't get in the way of of another. But it's a nice feature to have. It's one that I'm surprised isn't more prevalent in other um, uh, video players. Um, Unless it's a feature I've, I've obviously overlooked all this time. Um, so it seems like there are improvements to the various X apps and uh, the update manager as well. I've updated the system. You can update the kernel now. Um, I think it's, it's asking me if I want to update the kernel. Um, but I'm not going to. And then it's obviously it's asking me for a local mirror. But yeah, so it used to be the case that um, Linux Mint did not um, like updating the kernel because it considered that a risk to the the stability of the system. Now it still give, it gives you, a, it basically asks you and gives you a choice on first run um, how much you'd like to upgrade the system, whether or not you'd like to upgrade the kernel and every single component and every single piece of software, or do you only want to upgrade what makes your, you know, what, what the security updates? So do you only want to update your computer to the point where it's still secure and, and, uh, and it gives you options. So that's pretty good. So I think that's about it. I'm going to round off this video here now because it, there's a lot of waffling and I do apologize for that. One thing I do want to say I don't know if I've mentioned, but you can see that there are dark icons against the dark theme with the mint wire. I think I have. Um, but yeah, that's something that there, there, there isn't a mint Y um, icon theme for the dark theme to, to match it. I don't think there's only the mint Y icon thing. Anyway, new backgrounds. Again, it's a small touch like this that to me makes a difference. I'm not a big backgrounds person, believe it or not, even though it's something that I, I check out in almost all distributions. I suppose the reason why I do check out what desktop uh, what um, desktop backgrounds come with a, with an environment is so that I don't have to go looking for them. These A lot of these are new. Some of these are familiar, but a lot of these are new. I, I think that's a that was in GNOME. So that's good. There are a lot of good background images here. Nice high quality images. There's a lot of blur effects. I can't say I'm a big fan of the blur effects. 
Look at that, isn't that, isn't that amazing? That's beautiful. So, um, so yeah, like I say, the basically, um, I really like this version. This is probably my favorite version of Linux Mint 18.1, my favorite version of Linux Mint completely now. The icon theme can be fixed by just, you know, you can use the old theme or the, the Mint X theme, which looks great as well. Um, you can change the icon theme to like the older icon theme that still looks good and still works with the dark theme. So you've got options here. Any of the issues that I've sort of raised with this distribution, um, especially with the aesthetics, can all be fixed. XFCE is one of the most customizable desktop environments, one of my favorite, one of the, one of the lightest, um, and uh, in my opinion, one of the best. Um, Linux Mint. I would say one of my one of the best distributions out there for for newbie friendly specific people. If you are familiar with Ubuntu and and that kind of stuff, there's no reason why why you'd find Ubuntu any more difficult to use than Mint or Zubuntu any more difficult than this. Um, you've got options, and um, having lots of options is better than not having very many options at all in general. But this is this would be one that I choose. Um, it's now like made the short list of distributions that I'm installing on people's computers who have asked me to look after them for them. Um, because it is a community maintained distribution, I'm still going to keep a cautious distance of it in um, like a you know in mission critical situations because the you know like that's that's a time when you want the the officially supported um, primary flagship distribution there because that's the one that's had the most support for it. So. This is the first uh, Linux distribution, first impressions overview of the year. Uh, and I've got to say, um, things are looking promising for 2017. Um, let me know if there are any distributions you'd like to like me to review down in the comment section below. But I should tell you that I typically review the distributions that have had a new release recently, if, that's, if you're wondering if there's any rhyme or reason to this madness. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.